straight into the roof of the net. Nice one. Straight down the middle. So, a good performance from both teams here. Hello and welcome. You're watching First Sports. I'm Rupa Ramani. Let's get started. Right, on the show today, cricket and turmoil. Yes, them again. There seems to be trouble brewing in paradise. No, I mean Pakistan cricket. A video with the captain Babar Azam and Imad Wasim having a heated discussion has gone viral. What's the latest crisis that's striking this cricketing country? Also on the show, did the pressure of the occasion get to the young Kylian Mbappe? The French football star's dream of a Champions League title is shattered. Dortmund makes it to the final. What makes this side a success story? And finally, a story of heartbreak and what could have been. From the possibility of playing for Real Madrid to now trying to survive at a refugee camp. We bring you the story of one of the most talented teenagers in football. But first, Sports 360. We'll start with cricket. Delhi beat Rajasthan by 20 runs. Jake Fraser-McKirk and Abhishek Parel both smashed half centuries. Rajasthan's captain Sanju Samson scored 86 runs to keep the chase alive, but he was eventually dismissed in a controversial manner in the 15th over. Shea Hope got Samson close to the boundary rope. Sanju Samson has been fined 30% of his match fee for showing dissent at the umpire's decision. Rajiv Shukla, the vice president of the Board of Control for Cricket in India, the BCCI, has said India will be travelling to Pakistan for the 2025 Champions Trophy, but only if the central government permits so. The statement comes amid speculations over India's participation in this ICC tournament scheduled to take place in Pakistan next year. Over in tennis, a 25-year-old tennis player, Kylie McKinsey from the USA, was awarded $9 million in a lawsuit against the United States Tennis Association. In her lawsuit, she claimed the tennis body failed to keep her safe from being sexually assaulted by her former coach in 2018. Over in football, FIFA will vote on whether Brazil or the combined bid from Belgium, Netherlands and Germany will host the 2027 Women's Football World Cup. Brazil has the edge over the others due to logistical factors like stadiums and accommodation. FIFA is set to make this decision on the 17th of May. And in the NBA, Oklahoma City Thunder beat Dallas Mavericks 117-95 to in their Western Conference semi-final series opener. Shea Giljus Alexander scored 29 points for the Thunder and in the Eastern Conference semi-final, the Boston Celtics also opened up a 1-0 lead over Cleveland Cavaliers. Jalen Brown scored 32 points as the Celtics won 120-95. to Now, what are the two biggest tournaments in the world of football? One, of course, is the World Cup. Nothing beats a World Cup trophy and victory playing for your country always is special. What's the other? Well, I say it's the Champions League. While World Cup serves as the pinnacle of international football, Champions League is the biggest challenge in club football. No matter the star power or stature of an individual, clinching both the trophies is not easy. And that's what Kylian Mbappe will be feeling at this point. Mbappe may have won the World Cup, and that too when he was only 19, but the Champions League trophy has always been missing from his trophy cabinet. Yesterday's clash between Borussia Dortmund and Paris Saint-Germain had all the makings of a classic showdown. But after the final whistle, it was Dortmund who emerged victorious, leaving PSG and their star player Kylian Mbappe once again grappling with heartbreak. For Mbappe, it was yet another bitter pill to swallow. His quest of winning the Champions League continues as PSG faltered on the grand stage once more. It took just one goal from Dortmund's Mats Hummels in the second half to seal a 2-0 aggregate win for Dortmund. And in a match defined by fine margins, Mbappe and his forwards, Goncalo Ramos and Usman Dembele have nobody else to blame. The trio missed opportunities that proved costly for PSG. Two crucial chances went begging, denying PSG the breakthrough they desperately craved. Despite a majority of ball possession and 30 shots, Mbappe and PSG failed to pose a threat to Dortmund. It has now become a bit of a pattern with Mbappe. In the six seasons that he's played with PSG, Mbappe has, of course, played alongside some of the biggest names in the sport. But none of them won the Champions League title while playing with PSG. Whether it's Messi, Neymar, Thiago Silva, Angel Di Maria and Kaylor Navas all won the Champions League 
but it was either before their stint with PSG or after they left. This time, the heartbreak was of course a lot to bear because it could very well be his last season with this French club. After the match, Mbappe was asked if he would be supporting Real Madrid in tonight's semi-final against Bayern Munich. A visibly irritated Mbappe rolled his eyes and walked away without answering that question. Now, let's be fair, not the brightest question to ask someone who's just lost a shot at the Champions League. But the agony and frustration was visible and understandable. And while it was heartbreak in the PSG camp, Dortmund passed in their glory. The players went berserk. Marco celebrated with fans inside the stands. Stunning visuals that, an absolute legend of the club who's been with Dortmund since 2012 and was part of the setup the last time Dortmund featured in the Champions League final in 2013. The triumph clearly special for Marco because the Champions League final would be his last game for Dortmund. Dortmund's road to the final has been nothing short of remarkable. Their first appearance in the Champions League final since 2013. It's a testament to their resilience and determination. Good evening. Yeah, <laughs> this is what one imagines, of course. We would have expected our Bundesliga season to be much more successful, especially after we played a great second half of the season last year. I think the last time we were at Wembley, we were also 25 points behind the league leaders. So when we won it in 97, we weren't performing that strongly in the season either. That's something that isn't completely new to us now. You can see the manager being so excited, they're controlling his joy. A keen observation though, and that is how Dortmund has been this season too. They are fifth in the German league and they have done wonders here at the Champions League. Just like the last time they won this. The side has no superstars, no fanfare, there's no shusha, no dance and show. And yes, nobody gave them a chance. I guess that's when the best really flourish, under the radar, as Dortmund have displayed. And one name who stands out in this triumph is, of course, Jadon Sancho. The young prodigy has been instrumental in Dortmund's success. Sancho, who is on a lone move from Manchester United, may have scored only one goal in his six Champions League matches this season, but has created chances that have been key in Dortmund's wins. Dortmund's tactical discipline and clinical finish finishing were what separated them from the rest so far. They capitalised on PSG's defensive lapses and made them pay dearly. As Dortmund march on to the Champions League final, PSG are left to pick up the pieces once again. For Mbappe and company, it's back to the drawing board as they wonder what could have been. But for Dortmund, it's almost like they've won it all, but they still haven't won the final. That's one more match left. Right now, all they want to do is soak in the moment. Normal doesn't work when it comes to Pakistan cricket. They don't do normal. Normal is boring. The country, its players, the cricketing system love living in volatile circumstances. They revel in it. A reason why they have often been termed as a mercurial side. Pressure is good when you are a Pakistan cricketer because that is what reinstated captain Babar Azam is feeling at this moment. A lot of pressure and nowhere to go. The T20 World Cup is around the corner and the biggest concern for Pakistan is not that a squad is yet to be announced. But how will Babar Azam reignite the team to get going? The testing ground, of course, for that is the series against Ireland and England that's coming up. But all doesn't seem to be too well in that regard. A video, and you'll see snaps of that right here, from one of their practice sessions went viral and it had Babar Azam having a seemingly heated exchange of words with Imad Wasim. It is just about everywhere and now arguments, disagreements is all fine but, and it happens in every team. But this is not every team, this is Pakistan and they have a history of living in chaos and making the headlines for all the wrong reasons. There are rumours of course of infighting in the Pakistan camp and there are two camps. We have already documented the friction between Babar Azam and his predecessor now, Shaheen Afridi, who had taken charge post the shambolic ODI World Cup. And now there is this. The PCB2, in a cryptic statement, just recently said they wanted Babar Azam to settle back into his role as captain. So a lot is riding on how well this team syncs up, at least in the dressing room, because that is what will translate 
to a good performance on the field. And Barbar Azam is aware of that. Whatever success I achieved previously as captain was because of the players who supported me. And the same is true now. Important is, the board is backing us completely to do well. Now, there is a bit of unease, of course, and that you can't deny that. The injuries to some of their key players, including Mohamed Rizwan, is worrisome. The return of some players who quit cricket, like Mohamed Amir, ought to add another dimension to Babar Azam's role. It's a new entity to the way he used to run affairs. All of this happening with just a few weeks to go for the T20 World Cup, so the pressure to get things right and only a few days left to do that is intense. The only calm head that I can sense in this setup has to be that of Gary Kirsten, their new coach in the shorter formats. He was India's coach when they lifted the 2011 World Cup and every single player told you stories of how well Gary Kirsten was able to manage a team of so many stars. That picture of Kirsten being carried by Indian cricketers tells the real story. I've worked with Gary Kirsten when he came on board the Gujarat Titans, the IPL franchise, as mentor. And I can say from watching him up close, that he is a rather calm presence in a dressing room. He is non-intrusive, extremely helpful, untiring in his dedication and the time that he devotes to every person in that setup, whether it's a player, a support staff, or anyone else associated with the team, or in this case, the franchise. He's always encouraging and that really helps. Getting into a positive space in situations that can get tense and go out of hand very quickly. So Kirsten's presence in the Pakistan dressing room will be exactly that. And Barbara Azam believes Kirsten will do, add a lot of depth to the Pakistan think tank. He's a very experienced coach and his presence should be beneficial for us all. He's already taking a lot of interest in the planning for the World Cup and discussing strategy with the team management. He shares his plans with us. Discussions are happening with coaches about our planning and we update him on net practice plans like how the bowling practice went today. And let's face it. Barbara Azam will need someone to act as the foil here when tempers flare or when the many egos clash because there will be a lot of that happening in the weeks to come and Barbara Azam has a lot riding on him too as an individual performer, a key batter in that lineup. He's creeping up on an incredible record when it comes to most runs scored in the T20 international format. He's currently behind Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. He needs 215 runs to surpass Kohli and 151 to get past Rohit Sharma in that second position. And he's also gotten so far in lesser number of innings. So there is a lot on him to perform because he is arguably one of the best batters Pakistan has produced. And it doesn't help too that the board has put out an announcement of rewarding each of their player, players $100,000 if they win the World Cup. The idea, of course, was to provide an incentive, but talk about added pressure. Maybe a focusing on getting things right against Ireland first up will be a good place to start for this captain to set his comeback at the helm straight. Our story is right today is about a teenager, a 17-year-old super talented footballer. His dream is to play for his national side, make it big in football. And his talent is promising. Real Madrid certainly thought so. La Liga champions Real Madrid. They thought this youngster was good enough to play for them. And this teenager, they in fact extended an invitation for him to come over and join his academy. They spotted his talent when, they scout, when the scouts flew over in August last year. He was scouted to be a part of some of the elite footballers in the world. But he can't join them. There is just a slight issue. The teenager is Mohammed Abu Hujair and he is stuck in the middle of a war. A war between Israel and Hamas. He's stranded in Gaza, fighting to survive and hoping his dream doesn't turn to ashes along with the many other destructive effects that this war has brought. War doesn't just inflict physical damage but also cripples the dreams of many. Necessary infrastructure is destroyed and the means of nurturing sporting talents is shattered. While certain athletes possess raw talent and unwavering determination, their dreams are often quashed by the harsh realities of conflict and unfortunately being stuck in the middle of it. One such example has been that of Mohammed Abu Hujair, a 17-year-old football talent from Palestine. 
You know he's supremely talented because Abu Hujair impressed Real Madrid scouts in August last year. He was set to board a flight to Spain in October. Given his talent, he was supposed to be a part of the Real Madrid Academy. That flight took off, but without Mohamed Abu Hujair. A matter of a war came in between Abu Hujair and his dream. The Hamas-Israel war broke out right after the scouting, leaving the teenager torn and his hopes tattered. A boy who grew up on a football pitch is now stuck in a refugee camp in Palestine, away from the war zone, but still nowhere close to Spain. I get up every day crying at the loss this war has caused me. I'm just dreaming of an end to this war. I yearn for the boy I was before 7th October. My life has turned upside down in a blink of an eye. I've been robbed of my dreams. Instead of training every day, I am now living in a dilapidated tent where my biggest dream is to get back home. Abu Hujair doesn't have to look too far to stay inspired and keep that fire in him burning. In the recently concluded AFC Asian Cup, we saw Palestine qualify for the round of 16. The football team displayed remarkable resilience in the face of adversity. A war-ravaged country that fought and punched above its weight. They beat much bigger opponents like Hong Kong en route, being the beacon of hope for fans and their people back home. Hope that Palestine could rise through the ashes. Of course, this is support for the Palestinian people, especially with what is happening lately with the war on Gaza, and this is all support for our people. I hope that our name and our flag will always be lifted high with the support of all the Arab nations and all the people. But behind their valiant performances lies a harsh reality, a reality that's now confronting teenagers like Abu Hujair. Not too long ago, there were 10 football stadiums in Gaza. Kids like Abu Hujair used football as an escape in a country ruled by turmoil. Now, some of those stadiums are a pile of rubble, stones and boulders, and some are being turned to shelter homes. A reality check for any footballer who dreams of a future where they can play. The rise of the Palestinian football team would have given Abu Hujair a hope that he too can someday represent Palestine at the biggest stage. Real Madrid could have been that stepping stone for him. Abu Hujair is symbolic of a dream that continues to live on. A dream of every athlete who is caught in the crossfire. Countries like Palestine, Afghanistan and Syria possess immense potential. There are thousands of sporting athletes in war-torn countries who are waiting for a glimmer of hope. And war does things. It takes lives and sucks out resources, facilities, infrastructure stifling the growth of young athletes. Our players are being killed, our facilities have been destroyed and our clubs are being attacked. We have been trying to save our players' careers, but unfortunately, we feel helpless. We just managed to evacuate only a few from Gaza. However, they are mentally exhausted, their families are trapped and suffering in Gaza. How can they perform well? It's a huge dilemma. We really feel for them. Yet, amid all the doom and despair, hope endures. In refugee camps and war on streets, young athletes continue to defy the odds, fueled by their unwavering passion for the beautiful game. Abu Hujair will persist despite the daunting war. His story serves as a poignant reminder of the indomitable spirit that thrives even in the darkest of times. Time for last serve. The Med Gala has been all the talk. How well did celebrities enact the garden of time on their wardrobe? Sporting superstars were not far behind. Lewis Hamilton and Serena Williams bunked the sports gears for some glitzy attires. Take a look. Maria Sharapova stunning as always in that lime green outfit. But that does it here on First Sports. Thank you for joining in.
I'll see you again tomorrow. First Post puts the spotlight on Africa. We report from across the continent. Rewriting the narrative. Stories of hope and progress. Amid coups, conflicts, and climate crisis. The challenges are many, but so are the opportunities. Trying to do what benefits the majority of uh, citizens. Tracking the world's second largest continent. Launching soon. First Post Africa.